So a warm welcome for those of you who are joining during the worship. Welcome to the Prophetic Community Meetup, which we do once a term. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be serving you tonight. And there are a, f a couple of people who I'd like to welcome tonight. And uh, of course, the first one is Adna van der Nest. Catherine, if you can highlight Adna with me um, in the main room, that would be great. Oh, <laughs> did I catch you off guard? Sorry, Adna. All right. This is Adna and Heather. There we go. It's welcome. It's good to see you both. Adna Hi, from, from South Africa and, and Heather's from the US who's, and she's visiting um, Anna, but we'll be chatting with Heather shortly as well. And uh, Anna, I wonder if you would like to uh, just start your screen share. So Anna has a wonderful business prophetic council that she's going to share with you. And uh, Anna, you're also welcome to, <laughs> are we sorting out the slideshow? You're also welcome to add your contact details into the comment section when you're done, Anna. But please, will you share with us what is your community about? Um, how can people contact you? Uh, what is it that you are doing? Sure. Uh, that's, there we oh, go. Thank you, Elaine. And good evening to everyone. Um, I just realized that I forgot to actually put my contact details. So great marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it then in the in the chat afterwards. But um, yeah, so we are part, we are based in Pretoria, South Africa. Um, we have a group of people, um, and we do business council for uh, or prophetic council for business people. And we started the group, uh, I think, towards the end of last year. And uh, so basically, how it works, it's based. Um, if you look, I think you can sh uh, see the slide. Yes, you can. Thank you, Adna. Yeah, so it's based on Proverbs 19, verse 21, that says many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So our hearts are really towards business people to, to give them counsel, including then uh, prophetic words for their businesses. Uh, because I believe, and we all actually believe that it's a season where businesses are very important, but also the hearts of business people as well. And they also need encouragement and counsel like, like the rest of us for our own personal lives. And so the purpose is to give an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to minister to business owners. And then we are also expanding it now to other leaders or managers in the private and public sector. So if you know someone or if yourself, you you are a leader in a in a company and you have a department that um, that reports to you within which you function, then you are also welcome to contact us if you need um, a prophetic counsel for that section. Or even if you're a business owner, it doesn't need to be a big company. Uh, we've uh, counseled many small startups. And I think, um, you know, I'm, I've also been a business owner for 25 years. And even now I'm starting um, other companies and the start is quite difficult always because you really have to break the ground. And, you um, you know, and, and, and when you get counsel in, in those circumstances, it's very helpful. And then um, how we work is we uh, get uh, discern God's will for predetermined topics. And so we don't only function blindly on on uh, words of, of knowledge. It's also words of wisdom mostly. So business owners or the, uh, people, leaders have to complete a questionnaire, for example, on marketing or your strategic plan. And um, then we hear God's voice and speak into those plans which are already on the table. And then um, I think I already mentioned that we are a team of people. Um, we are about eight or 10. And some of them are in government, some of them are in ministry, some of them also are other business owners, and all of them have been trained in the prophetic. And then um, I just want to quickly mention that sometimes there's a screening, so we might not be the right group that can help you, but then we refer people to other groups if we feel that we can't help them. Um, and then there's also sometimes a waiting period because we only do two to three businesses per month. And then, so I want to really, there are two opportunities available. And the other day I heard someone do a very great teaching on opportunities. And I believe this, this is a season for opportunities, but we need to discern where we have to be involved in or not. So, but the two opportunities are if you, if you then are a business owner or um, in charge of a department or a group in a company, you're welcome to contact us if you need counsel. And I'll, uh, like I said, I'll put my email address just now in the chat. And then otherwise, if you want to be involved and you feel called to, to also give business counsel to, um, to businesses, then you're also welcome to, to um, contact me. Uh, you don't have to be involved every month. You know, some people go through busy seasons and then they, for example, just sit out for two or three months. But it's, it's always nice to have a group of prophetic people because we see in part. Yes. 
So thanks, Elaine. Yeah, I'll put my contact details and, and everyone, anyone can contact us then for either, either of those opportunities. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Adna. And just, uh, I was just wondering, as you're talking about business, is it also for entrepreneurs? It's basically for anybody who's either interested in business or currently in business. Am I right? Yeah, for startups or for people who are well established as well. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, because I think we all go through different seasons and you need counsel in different seasons. Um, yes. That is very, very true, and which is part of what the topic is about tonight. So those of you who feel you want to get involved with Adna in her prophetic business council and you want to be part of the team, please do contact her. And uh, we'll also add, make sure that we add your uh, contact details in the, in the comment section for those of you who want to contact her either to be part of the uh, council, the team itself, or to or to submit your business for uh, for counseling. I know it's not that your business needs counseling, but to get a prophetic word and insight and strategy. So thank you very much, Anna. We do appreciate that. So I was wondering if Heather is still with you in the room or is she on her, her uh, there she is. Okay, so <laughs> Heather, let's just introduce Heather while, while she's on screen. Um, this is totally unplanned, but it's wonderful <laughs> to have you there, Heather. Uh, Heather is from Revealing the Heartbeat of God. We've been journeying together for several years. We actually did training together uh, through, via Randy Clark's um, prophetic school. And uh, so Heather, I, you know, I always joke and I say, where in the world is Heather? But we know that she's in South Africa. Heather's tra got a traveling ministry and she's always, uh, gosh, traveling from one continent to another. You've just come from New Zealand and Australia. So warm welcome to South Africa. <laughs> and uh, Heather, what are your plans? What are your plans in South Africa? Are you connecting? Are you presenting? What are you doing? Um, <clears throat> kind of all of the above. Sorry, I was saying way too loud this weekend. Um, but yeah, just... I'm going to be in Pretoria for the, till the end of the week, and then I'm headed to East London. But November is kind of still up in the air. I feel like it'll be in South Africa. Not sure exactly what God's doing. Uh, but yeah, I basically do prophetic workshops, but they're really focused on helping people to like learn how to prophesy. That's sort of my lane is to teach people that. Um, there may be a bit of a business arm to that as well that we are kind of looking into. Um, but yeah, and I wrote a book called Breadcrumbs from Heaven, by Says Prophecy. Unfortunately, you can't get the paperback in South Africa. We figured that out. Um, but there is a PDF version. So um, I can put the website in there if you're interested in that. But I know it's helped a lot of people. So yeah, it's been fun. Wow, it's fantastic. I'm so grateful. I just think that our timing is totally off because you're in South Africa and I'm in the UK. I mean, how does that work out? So we'll have to get together. Please do come to the UK. And I will. there are people on this part of the world who also need to be equipped and who want to meet you. So, Adna, thank you for hosting Heather for the for these few days. I think that's just, you know, well done. And uh, enjoy your stay in South Africa. People are generally very friendly and warm. That's our warm culture in South Africa. So have a fantastic time while you're staying there. And please do comment, uh, add your contact details in the comment section. And of course, if any of you wanted to connect with um, Heather in any way for her online ministry, she also does ministry on Facebook and Zoom. And I mean, it's all over the world. You're welcome to connect with her as well. And then for everybody else who is attending tonight, if you have your own ministry, if you're part of a group and you would like to advertise it, you're welcome to comment, put that in the comment section as well. Please do add your contact details. Um, just so that people can contact you directly. But this is a community. This is why we're networking together. Uh, we have people signing in from all over the world tonight. So even if you're traveling to the uh, for the to the US, for example, I can see Elizabeth on my screen, and there's Daniel and Susan <clears throat> and a whole bunch of people. If you're going to um, if you're going to uh, Hawaii, you can chat to Michelle. If you're coming to the UK or this part of the world, please do connect with me. I'd love to meet with you on this side on, on my part of the world. But we're going to get started right now uh, with our teaching for this evening. It's a very short teaching, and then we're going to go into a time of practicals. I just need to get my screen sorted out so that I don't forget anything. All right, so we're going to be chatting about how are we going to grow our prophetic ministry. And so I've been pondering a lot on that and what the Lord's done this year in particular uh, with, my, with my ministry and everything that I'm involved in is that he's been building my character extensively. <laughs> At times, it felt... Uh, like I was, you know, a rolling pin was kind of just working its way all over every part of my ministry. So I'm going to start my, my screen share and uh, we'll get started with that and then we'll start with the first practical. And um, I trust uh, really by faith that the Lord's going to minister to you tonight so that you can see what it is that he has planned for you. What is it that he's calling you to? I just want to adjust my screen size so that you can see the PowerPoint properly. 
and um, I just want to dedicate this time first to the Lord, if if you can just indulge me for a, for a few moments. Father, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you that you've taken us to places. You have uh, networked us with multiple other ministries, Lord. Thank you that you've equipped us over the years, Lord. Thank you that you have spoken into our character, that you have built us, that you've molded and shaped us like the potter does on a potter's wheel. So, Father, tonight we dedicate um, ourselves to you afresh and anew. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, will you come and fill us afresh for tonight? Lord, may you bring to completion that which you have started in and through us. And we just want to honor you and praise you as the great I am. We love you, Lord. We come into your gates uh, with praise and thanksgiving. And so we dedicate this evening to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, so I'm going to be chatting a little bit about character building tonight, and it's a very short teaching, but, you know, we love to always teach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's always a big focus and an emphasis on the gifts, and uh, obviously, because we're all involved either in the prophetic, or we love the prophetic, or we're passionate about all the gifts of the of the Holy Spirit, um, it's easy for us to flow in that area. However, it is equally important uh, for us to spend time and and go through the growth of fruits of the spirit, which is part of our character building, our character is strengthened in endurance and perseverance and gratitude, and that takes time. We can't; uh, it doesn't happen overnight. So there's no pressure tonight. There's no judgment whatsoever. Uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And it's easy for us to take a leap of faith and to to start our prophetic ministry, whether it's a ministry for one, if you're a captain of one, a captain of 10, a captain of 100 or a captain of 1,000, you know, it's easy to get started. But it's a whole different ball game for us to build um, into that so that we are able to follow through and not give up the first time there's a bit of a wobble or a stumbling block. And that's character building. So especially, you know, when life kind of throws us those curveballs or things, we're confronted by challenges and trials like like everybody. I don't know about you, but, I, you know, the Lord's often challenging me with a whole bunch of things. But you probably all have amazing, perfect lives with no problems whatsoever. Um, I cannot put my hand up <laughs> when I make that statement. There are multiple challenges and trials and tribulations all the time. And it's there for us to grow. And uh, we should be rejoicing in that. So only when our character starts to grow and we trust more in the Lord and less on our own understanding does this process start to evolve. So let's get started. I find myself being challenged in this season with bigger faith building challenges this year. Now, who of you can relate? So I'm, I'm a very interactive, engaging kind of speaker. So I would love for you to click on that little emoji panel. If you do, you, who's going through like bigger faith building challenges this year, much more so than last year. Yes. Thank you, Susan. I see a couple of people are raising their hands. So I'm not just the only one. Maybe the rest, uh, everybody else has got these perfect lives. No, no issues, no struggles whatsoever. So I'm, I'm glad it's relatable. Thank you for those of you who are being honest and transparent. Uh, you know, these issues and these stumbling blocks uh, seem to be much larger this year for me specifically. Perhaps you can relate to that as well. I also have another challenge that the time frame of these challenges seem to be time sensitive. Uh, it wasn't like that last year, but this year, all of a sudden, it's like the Lord is just speeding everything up. And so um, my faith is being tested, my patience, and um, of course, having to run this race with endurance uh, is being tested as well. And I've reached certain situations, and perhaps you can relate to this, where I just say, Lord, I can't do this by myself. This issue, uh, Lord, if you, if you don't help me, this is not going to happen. Can anybody relate to that? I mean, you know, it's just, Lord, I can't go forward if you don't come through in a mighty way. And, and either give me a revelation or give me a breakthrough for this uh, particular issue that's that's risen up. So I see a few more people, people are putting their hands up. And it's interesting that it's happening in this year, but I, I have a revelation. I've asked the Lord about it. And it's because we've stepped out of our comfort zone this year. My family and I have relocated to a different country. Uh, we're having to start afresh and anew, starting a new network with uh, starting, uh, you know, a new, not starting a church, but joining a new church. So we have multiple new challenges that we never had when we were back in South Africa, sitting on our couches. Uh, you know, we had everything available to us. We had our network set up. It was easy. And as soon as you 
change that. Uh, the dynamics change and the challenges uh, are different. And it's not a bad thing. It's a very, very good thing because our faith has grown in this process. So now when things start going wrong, now I'll ask the Lord, okay, Lord, what are you teaching me in this season? Who can relate to that? Like, who of you are asking, Lord, Lord, how, how can I grow in this particular season with this particular challenge? Um, I can't go back to woe, woe is me, like Catherine would always say. I can't fall back to that default setting. We're, we're past that. We're now into the phase of, Lord, what are you teaching me? How should I grow in this season? How can I step out in faith and be the best possible ambassador for the Lord Most High in this season? So are you willing to you know, persevere or are you going to just give up and go back to your old ways? And this is something between you and the Lord. You know, fruit need to be cultivated. It doesn't just grow by itself miraculously. Um, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit represent power, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit represents character. And so I'm going to be just spending a few moments on, on character building. Uh, one of my favorite Bible teachers, I have several, but one of them is Derek Prince. And he says that, you know, gifts or power without character is dangerous. And if you think about it, it actually does make sense. I'm going to say it again. Gifts or power without character is dangerous. It's like a young man, he says, with a new sports car that, uh, and he has hardly any driving experience. And he's likely to have a wreck due to his immaturity and lack of driving skills. So it's wonderful to have these amazing power gifts within us. But do we have the maturity and the character? to help navigate these, these powerful gifts that we have. Now, on the flip side of the coin, you know, good character is wonderful, but we do need the gifts. I mean, it's wonderful to be growing in the fruit, but we do need the powerful gifts of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we're going to be ineffective. There has to be a balance between the two. So as believers, we want to be part of the solution um, and not part of the problem. For example, if somebody's feeling sick or um, they're going through a really challenging series, a, a season, it's wonderful for us to be empathetic, to be compassionate, um, you know, to have to extend grace to people, which is wonderful. But we also need faith. We also need miracles. We need the gift of healing to when we lay hands on somebody who's sick for those power gifts to manifest. So as you can see, we need to be challenging ourselves on both of, of these gifts. And remember, they're both supplied by the Holy Spirit. So the one should not be manifesting more than the other. We should be building into what it is that the Lord has called us for. So we need both to be effective in our ministry. And as we build our ministry, the, you know, some of the, we might see that some of the fruit you know, is out of balance. So let's just briefly recap Gal Galatians 5, 22 to 26. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited or provoking or envy each other. Now, Paul's point in, in these verses was to emphasize that the attributes that should be evident in our lives, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we should be sure that we have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. I was severely tested in patience. Now, a funny story, my brother used to always say to me, don't ever pray for, pray for, for patience because you'll be tested <laughs> in that area uh, like you cannot believe. So I don't know about you. Um, I'm sure you all have 100% patience with everything in your life. But uh, I was definitely tested with patience and long suffering over the last few weeks. Um, the students from the academy will know that we didn't have internet uh, fiber installation in our home. So we were trying to navigate our Zoom calls with our phones, um, creating hotspots, and it was a disaster. So at a, at a point I said, Lord, if, you know, we had to wait for two, we had to wait two weeks for the installation guy, or like they would call them engineers to come. 
and um, install our fiber internet here at, at home. And I'd reached a point of, I, I was so annoyed by this whole situation of not, not having internet that I said, Lord, if you want me to carry on with ministry, then please let the whole fiber connection work. But Lord, if it doesn't, I'm also okay if I need to stop uh, doing any ministry online. I, I'm totally fine with that. And, and I will surrender to your will, Lord, because I know that you have a better plan for me. And so the, the internet connection guy uh, came to our house. He was here for a, a whole full five minutes. All he did was brought a plug. He plugged it in. He spent a couple of seconds on his phone. He said, oh, you're good to go. And I said to him, okay, what about the routers? Oh, no, you you, you need to set that up. And I thought, oh, Jesus, help us with that one. So uh, he said, well, you know, just download the app and follow the instructions and, and you'll be good to go. And he left. And I thought, why have we been waiting two weeks, struggling with patience and long suffering for a five-minute visit? Um, needless to say, as you can see tonight, all is good, all is well, the Lord is faithful. Uh, we were able to connect to our two routers that we have in the house. We have a backup as well. So uh, the Lord is faithful and we are back on Zoom streaming online. And I just give the Lord all the honor, praise and glory for that because it was certainly a test of faith. All right, so here we have uh, the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the fruit uh, of the Spirit should be manifested in the following characteristics. So if we have a look at love, it is a self-sacrificial love. We are devoted to someone and the love that is willing for us to serve others. This is the type of love that makes it possible for you and I and for all believers to commune and to be in pe at, at peace with one another. Then we have joy. Now, those of us um, who have been with the Lord for some time will have many stories. If I were to ask you many, many stories to tell, real world stories of circumstances that were rather unpleasant or challenging. And yet supernaturally, we were still filled with joy. And that was because of the Holy Spirit who was with us, living in us. We then have peace. Now, peace is that calm feeling that we experience uh, when God, by his grace, he calls us into his family and we surrender to him and we um, we are part of, of the family and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, we, the word says that peace goes beyond our human understanding. And sometimes it feels like there's a hurricane raging around us and yet we're in the eye of the storm. And, you know, we, we're in the, we, we're being protected and um, it's, it's like the things in the world do not phase us because we are in perfect peace with the Lord. Then there's long suffering and patience. This is the one that I've really been struggling with this, this year. And the Lord's been sharpening my arrow for, for long suffering and patience. And this is defined as the ability and the willingness to endure painful, sometimes irritating circumstances, as well as injuries caused by others and I know um, that I shouldn't be flippant about this because many people have experienced trauma and uh, we have to then go through that season and grow in patience and long suffering. Next up we have kindness now this refers to the tenderness which manifests in someone when he or she is treated um, you know when, when we treat others with with respect and consideration. There's goodness. This refers to uh, the excellence in character shown through means of word, works of kindness. Now, the key word here is excellence. So we, we work as un, everything as unto the Lord, and that's where goodness and excellence comes in. We also have faithfulness. This refers to being loyal and trustworthy, and that's such an important fruit that we should grow in. Uh, there is always a, a kind of a, a tug of war between should I be loyal or, or should I be, you know, gossiping about this? And I really trust that you will be faithful and be loyal and trustworthy, especially in your prophetic ministry, that we don't belittle each other or judge each other, but that we rather come alongside each other and support one another. And our Lord is so faithful that I'm telling you that's part of my motto. I can even proclaim it in my sleep and in my dreams. The Lord is faithful regardless of what's going on. Then we have gentleness. We show tenderness and consideration to others and we don't seek revenge of, of other ministries. You know, we stay in our lane. Uh, we are subject to what the Lord has called us to do. He has a plan and a purpose for each of us. And so we 
we um, represent the kingdom with our gentleness. Lastly is self-control. Now, I know none of you struggle with that. We are all just fabulous when it comes to self-control. Um, this is because it means that we do not follow, uh, you know, our, our fleshly impulses or our unholy desires. We must stay sober at all times and grow in self-control, which is really important. Now, each season has its own challenges where we encounter. Now, perhaps if you're new to the prophetic or perhaps you have your own ministry already, perhaps you're in leadership, perhaps you're equipping, perhaps you're an um, evangelical prophet or you're a worshiping prophet or a teaching prophet, an apostolic prophet. So what does, you know, what does the fruit, what does that all mean for our ministry? Well, our character grows as we grow with God. And each season or each challenge that we encounter, we grow in our character. So we grow in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And as we grow in our ministry, we will be confronted by various challenges, um, anything that kind of sharpens our character and our gifts. And like I mentioned earlier, that is when we ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you are teaching me in this season? Where can I grow? How can I expand? Because ultimately we want to be Christ-like. We don't want to go back to our former self, which is really important. So we grow in leadership. We manage our teams. We go on outreaches. You know, where is it that the Lord has called you? Um, should you be leading a team? I actually sense that there are a few people on our call who is kind of, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard Base, kind of thinking should I go on this outreach or not oh you know what I don't really have you know the right support or I don't have the right finances or I don't have this or I don't have that I want to encourage you that this is a fabulous opportunity for you to go on that outreach to be a leader to lead your team you know you have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, that is relevant it is available to you you carrying it uh, with you all the time and I want to encourage you to to reach out in faith and um, to go on that outreach and don't be surprised you know don't underestimate small beginnings and uh, speak to speak to your community and uh, if it's a financial challenge then you know by faith you can start reaching out uh, and stating your claim and saying you know lord this is what i would like to do um can you provide for it and you can i actually received a video this morning from a friend of mine who um, is reaching out for financial support she's wanting to go to austria to a 24-7 uh, prayer outreach. And uh, so if you if that is your situation, you can do the same. Uh, you know, if you don't speak about it, nobody's going to know about it. So reach out to your community and, and look for help. So everything we do is for our heavenly future. You know, our gifts will fall away, but our character is what causes us to become more Christ-like. And that is what we endeavor to do tonight. So we're going to be starting our practicals. And I hope you're ready for some fun. I just want to uh, move on to my next slide. So let me just quickly, very, very briefly, just stop, stop my screen share. Have you ever considered what is it that you are currently doing in this season? So I'm speaking to you as if you already are in ministry, which we all are, whether you're called for ministry amongst your family and friends, or whether it's in your workspace, or whether you have an, uh, you know, an NPO, or uh, whether you're part of a team. Um, that All of that's not really relevant. What I want you to consider tonight is, what is it that the Lord is telling you tonight to let go of? And what is he telling you to pick up for the season ahead? You'll see some of that. We're going to be looking at four slides, and this particular practical is for you. We are going to go into a breakout room afterwards where, for accountability purposes, I want you to share with two other people in your breakout room uh, what the revelation was that you received. So this is will be helpful if you do have a pen or paper with you or you want to type some notes on uh, on your phone. So we're not, for this first practical, you're not going to be prophesying over somebody else. The first practical is just to share. But this is where my heart comes in that I, I'm trusting that the Lord's going to give you a strategy for your prophetic ministry on how to develop it. So we've had a look at, at the fruits of the Spirit. And we've settled that, that we, we need to grow our character. But now what is God saying to you? Where are you now? What do you need to let go of so that you can embrace and step into your next season? Because we can't stay where we're at. Remember, I, I explained to you a little bit earlier, you know, this year has been a real challenge for us because we, we stepped out of our comfort zone. And this morning I had a, a woke up with a dream. 
And I'm not sure to who that uh, applies to. It definitely applies to me. But it was a, a dream where I was with one of my leaders and we were talking about a broken, somebody who, who's going through a broken season in ministry and the many challenges uh, that they are, are going through. And so while we're talking and chatting and we're just kind of uh, discussing, you know, what is the Lord actually saying? Like, how can we help this person? And, you know, all the details around that. We were walking and you'll see my slideshow as I as I carry on. You'll see it's it's about running a race. And uh, when I did the slideshow last night, uh, it it's about athletes. Now, just by a show of hands, how many of you did athletics at school? Uh, whether you enjoy running or not, that's irrelevant. Who of you did athletics? I mean, I did it in primary school. Oh, there are quite a few of us. Okay, fantastic. Only six of us. Oh gosh, all right, seven of us. Oh. No, eight. There are a few of us. Okay. Um, I did I must be honest with you, those of you who know me well, I'm not a big, I don't have a lot of passion for, for exercise. Uh, Lord, please forgive me. So those of you who do enjoy running, please do pray for me. Uh, but the point was in my dream, I had running shoes on, and uh, my feet started to hurt as we were walking. And I took my shoes off and I took my socks off and I had these huge, massive blisters. And I'm sure you can relate. Those of you, everybody's probably had a blister or two on, on their feet. And I had these blisters on the back of my feet and, and they were raw and they were painful. And in my dream, I'm like, you know, you kind of think, oh, that's really, really sore. And, and, and I didn't realize it until I got to the point where I'd walked way too far in these shoes and they were not comfortable anymore. They were not offering me the support anymore. And I woke up from that. And I've been pondering on it in the morning. And I said, Lord, but I don't understand. You know, these these were, okay, they weren't running shoes. They were walking shoes. But Lord, what is it that you're saying to me? What is it that I need to let go of so that I can step into the new shoes for the new season? And so this is what the practical, the first practical is about. So I'm going to start my, my screen share. And please, there's no, no judgment whatsoever. I want you to just spend time with the Lord. I'm going to give you a few moments just to ponder on what it is that you need to let go of. And I'll, I will take you through a few um, just vital questions and it's for yourself. And I'll give you a few moments to make a few notes. All right. So the title for this activation is what do you need to let go and what do you need to pick up? But for the first two slides, we're only going to focus on what do you need to let go? So don't worry about the coming slides. So, you you don't need to compare your ministry, your prophetic ministry with anybody else. Now, envision yourself running, whether you like running or not, that's irrelevant. Envision yourself that you are running a relay race and you're holding a baton. Now, you have a baton in your hand and you are running full speed. So you've got the right gear. You've got your athletic outfit on. You've got your running shoes on. Everything's ready. You are running in your lane. And the only purpose that you have is to get to the next athlete because you need to hand over the baton that you have in your hand. You can spot the, the next athlete. Uh, the next athlete is ready. They've warmed up. They've got, you know, they, they've got their hands stretched out. They're waiting for you. Now, I want, this is where you need to ponder. The baton that you have in your hand represents what you are currently doing in your ministry. And this is between you and the Lord. So run through a mental list. What am I doing in ministry right now? Now up ahead, you see an athlete waiting for you and they wait waiting to take the baton from you. So you're not giving anything away. You are just handing over. So here, let's have a look at the next slide. The race is not finished yet and you need to hand over that baton so what is the holy spirit number one what is the holy spirit showing you what do you need to let go in this season that you can hand over um, to the next athlete that's the first question i want you to ponder on that all right what is the even if it's one thing what is the one thing that's taking up all your time what is the one thing that's draining your energy? Or what is the one thing that you're doing so well that it's time to hand over? Have you ever reached that 
that situation in in your ministry where you've you've been teaching or you've been doing you know something repetitively you can actually do it in your sleep you've been doing it for so long what is that one thing that you need to hand over so that's the first question you can just write a couple of phrases on on your piece of paper or type it on your phone all right so here's here's the next question and this is really important who are you going to be handing the baton to now it's a little bit of a loaded question um, because have you mentored somebody who you can hand over or do you need to identify somebody who you should be mentoring who you can hand over to I'm just going to give you a moment. So we know what you want to hand over. Now we need to ask Holy Spirit, Lord, who are we handing it over to? The Holy Spirit is faithful. He will show you a picture of a person's face. He will give you a name. He will give you a, like a check in your spirit almost, like, no, not that person. That person's not mature enough yet. Um, you know, select this person. So don't worry about the time frame or how. Don't worry about that. All we want to know is we know what we need to let go of. Who are we going to hand over to? And so if you've got that in your uh, in your thoughts, this is the last slide. All right. So you're handing over to somebody else. Now the final one. What do you need to pick up for your ministry for the season going ahead? So we know what we've got to let go. We know who the person is, who we're going to give it to. Now, where is the Lord going to send us? Where is he stretching us? In which area that we can grow? Where is God calling you to expand in? I'm going to give you three possible solutions as you ponder on that. Uh, do you perhaps need, if you're new to the prophetic, do you perhaps need more equipping? Perhaps that's a solution. Um, if you have already been in the prophetic for a very long time, and but you've been like Elijah, you've been in the cave, you really haven't been active much, well, who is the Lord calling you to connect with? Which network should you connect with? Which church should you connect with? I feel there's somebody who I sense there's somebody who's just had a revelation. Ah, I've been pondering on that for some time. Well, Now's the time for you to connect with that church or that ministry. And then the last one, um, if you're still unsure, this is the big one, brace yourself. Should you perhaps step out in faith and start a ministry? So if that is you, can I get a couple of thumbs up? Because I sense there's a whole big group of people who have been procrastinating in a way or just haven't really stepped out in faith or just thought oh, I'll get to it eventually I'll, I'll get to it. thank you for those of you who've, who have put your hands up I, I honor you for your um, transparency and your honesty see we're, we're growing in the fruits of the Holy Spirit isn't that amazing so I'm going to ask Catherine to get our breakout rooms ready what we're going to do is we're going to have 15 minutes you're going to go into a breakout room with two other people so there will be three of you and you're just going to share very casually with everybody else um, a little bit of your background in the prophetic ministry, whether you're new in the, to it or not, it's really not important. But what did the Lord reveal to you? What should you let go? Who should you hand over to? And what should you be growing into? What are those three things that you can share? And I'm trusting that there will be more than enough time. You'll each have five minutes to share with one another. And once you're finished, please, if there's time left over, you can, you'll see the timer at, your, at the top right hand side of your, of your screen. Please, will you pray for one another for a release in this new, uh, in this new season for breakthrough for each other? I'm going to stop my screen share. I just want to ask Catherine, are you ready with the breakout rooms? She says yes. So if you are all ready, uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, you can take the, us through to the breakout rooms. Enjoy this time and please do pray for each other. Thank you, Catherine. All right. So I'd love to know just by thumbs up, did everybody receive a revelation of either something that you need to let go of or something that you need to step into? Um, I, I, thank you. I see Gunjan and Daniel's got their, got their emojis going. Thank you. Uh, Elise as well. 
Wonderful. I trust that you were encouraged when you shared. Thank you, Mark. And uh, I'm not sure if it was Adna or, or Heather either or, but I'm, I'm sure both. Oh, oh, both. Okay, fantastic. All right, so we're going to move on to the next practical. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Richard, who, let me just go back into presenter view again, who is one of our senior mentors at uh, the Academy of Prophecy. He also does our practicals. So warm welcome to you, to you, Richard. Thank you for spending your, your off day because uh, you're currently on holiday. Thank you for spending that with us. And we look forward to your practical. So over to you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Lane. Good evening, everyone. Um, when I was preparing for tonight, I just sensed that God said that he's going to bring, bring change. And that connects closely with, with the theme of tonight that Elaine just spoke about earlier on, about building and building our ministry. And, and some of the things that God showed me is that he's going to bring change in areas where it's unexpected. He says he's bringing water in, into the desert areas and he's um, turning the hearts of people towards him. He's turning governments and he's turning nations. And I just, in, in line with that, would like us to, to do a practical. Um, and let me share with you just this quick slide. I just, since the Holy Spirit said that, that build stands for, for, for five different things. The first one is basics. The second one is our relationship with God you and God. And the third one is improve or improvement. The second last, last one is leadership. And then the last one is decision. So I just sense that the Holy Spirit wants to touch one of those five areas in your ministry. And you need to look at those five and ask Holy Spirit, which one of that five is for the other person? I'm going to go into the breakout room now. So this is for the other person, as opposed to the one practical we did now. This is the Holy Spirit showing you which one of those five is applicable for the other person you're going to meet up with now. Okay, so if it's basics, is Holy Spirit maybe telling them to go back to basics. Maybe they're trying something that's not working, and God wants them to go back to the basics, back to their original calling. Um, the second one is, is, as I said, relationship between the other person and God. Maybe God is saying, or well, Holy Spirit is saying something to you about that. Then it's improve. What do they need to improve in their ministry? And then leadership. Maybe they need to look at their leadership. Maybe bring in someone else. Maybe reduce leadership. Maybe change their leadership. And the last one is decision. Is there a decision that they need to make? Is there a decision that um, someone else needs to make? What is Holy Spirit saying to them about decision? Okay, so ask Holy Spirit, which one of that five is applicable to the other person? And as you get into the breakout rooms, you're going to give them a prophetic word about that. Okay. I trust you guys uh, got some new insights in there from the Holy Spirit. Um, so we're going to do a similar exercise now. And let me share again with you. But in this uh, exercise, we're going to kind of focus on growing our ministry. So it's similar to building. Um, so the first picture there is preparing the soil. The second one to the right of it is fertilizer added to the soil. And then third one left bottom is watering. And then the last one is mentoring. Okay, so what is the Holy Spirit saying? To you for your ministry Where, which of these areas do you need to focus on in your ministry okay so you either need to get, go back and, and do some hard work in preparing the soil for your ministry um, that could mean some maybe fasting uh, waiting on the Lord for longer periods um, fruits of the spirit that Elaine just spoke about maybe relationships that needs to be um, attended to so quite a few things that you can ponder on there and then the second one is adding some fertilizer and and for me that is where people get tired and they need an energy boost so maybe that's where you are in your ministry and what is holy spirit saying to you in that area 
And then the third one is watering. So the watering links me up with the Holy Spirit. So what is Holy Spirit saying for you, for your ministry? Um, it could be a prophetic word that you need or, or the Holy Spirit's going to give you. And then the last one, mentoring. Obviously, that is quite a quite a wide area. Um, it could be that you need some guidance in your ministry um, from an expert or from a leader. Um, it could be that you need to bounce some ideas off someone or you need to get objective feedback or inputs. Quite a few things that the Holy Spirit can show you there. So, ask Holy Spirit, which one of these areas do you need to focus on in the coming season? Okay, let him highlight one of the areas for you. And then as you go into the breakout rooms, you're going to reveal to the other person which area you feel Holy Spirit is laying on your heart. And then we're going to ask the other person to give you a word in that area. Okay, so this is a step up from the previous one. So you are basically unprepared when you go into the breakout rooms for the word for the other person. You let the Holy Spirit highlight one of these areas for you. You reveal that to the other person in the breakout room, and the other person needs to give you a word on that area. Okay. And if we can do another seven minutes, it would be great, Elaine. Seven minutes. Yes, we're good to go. Catherine, are you ready? She's just changing the time. Yes, she says she's ready. Thank you so much, yeah. Catherine. You can, we can usher everybody into their breakout rooms. Thank you, Rehat. So, who would like to give us some feedback on either of the two practicals we you just did now um we've got time for about two people to give feedback anybody that that's got something that they wanted to share Mapula. good evening everybody um actually i'm raising my hand um So something very new, uh, actually, that the Holy Spirit just did uh, today, like now, and I'm really excited about uh, what he's just done. And it's really just in building my confidence as well. Um, in listening for my partner, uh, for, uh, you know, for the prophetic word for them, I started to write down the words that I was hearing the Holy Spirit say. And mid writing it down, the Holy Spirit said, stop writing and tell uh, the person what the words are and the rest of it will come. Um, and so I did that and it came. So really, really excited uh, about it. So yeah, hashtag still new to prophetic, not <laughs> even 12 months old, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. I just I get goosebumps yeah. listening to that. Thank you very much, Mapula, for sharing. Well done. Anyone else? Can I go, Richard? <laughs> Is it Ellen? Yeah, <laughs> Go for it. Um, actually, yeah, that was amazing. Amazing. Um, from the first one that we had and the second one, I had Naomi, um, and the second one I had Nico. Uh, beautiful confirmations, I mean, and the link between the two was just so beautiful and powerful. Um, and before the session, I sat in my room, I played soul music, I was telling Naomi, and I said, God, everything that has happened with me throughout the week, I remove it. I just want to be pure and, 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 and then, you know, so that we are a blessing and we are blessed. So you speak through others and you speak through us, but you must just move and remove everything. And it was just absolutely amazing, powerful. Very powerful. Well done. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, and we're going to end up with El Elizabeth. Um, first, I want to say, Richard, thank you for the, the chart you had. I have never seen it that way. And it made things so much easier. And uh, the first uh, the first uh, practical, it's like, oh, my goodness. What do I do? Holy Spirit. And of course, he helped me through it. Uh, everything was right on target, and I say that a lot, a lot, but it was. The Holy Spirit was really ministering to me in both those practicals, and I had to be, depend on him because I felt, oh, oh, Lord, <laughs> where do I go with this? Please help me. <laughs> but victory. 
victory. I am awesome. absolutely blessed and amazed by what uh, was spoken today and how he resolved what he has spoken to this. <laughs> Amen. We give God the honor. Thank you yeah. very much, Elizabeth. Thank you for all for participating. You're Back welcome. to you, Lane. Thank you so much, Rehad. Now, wasn't that fun? I hope you're ready for more. Uh, we're going, we've just gone into the last half an hour of, of our time slot. So I'm going to hand over to Willeen. Uh, Willeen, Catherine, if you could put, bring Willeen into the main room. And I'm hoping we can do both practicals. Like, Jesus, we make the sun stand still. Uh, but let's start with the first one. Thank you, Willeen. Thank you so much, Elaine. Um, I'll see how the time goes because I feel that the first practical is important. So I'd rather spend time on that one. Okay. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome back. It's an honor to be with you. For those of you who are here for the first time, you're amazing. And this is going to be fun. So watch. Okay. So tonight we are going to do something called a seer activation. Samuel the prophet was also called a seer. And I'm going to show you a way that you can practice to see more. So um, the idea of this activate, activation is specifically so that you can learn to see in detail so that when God speaks, you know how to ask for more while you encounter something that you're seeing. So sometimes the Holy Spirit shows us a vision and we accept that this is what he's showing us and that that's all we're going to see. But we can become still and in a space where we can ask more questions. And sometimes he will show you more and other times he might not. But we want to press in for more and see if he wants to say something else. So he can take us back into the vision where you can see things again. And then as he shows us more, we see more information. We can get more detail and a better interpretation. And so then a better understanding of what he's trying to say. And so I want to encourage you with this last practical. It sounds complicated, but it's not. And I'm going to take you through the steps of how you can experience what that is like, because it is time for us to go higher as a prophetic community and we can see more. So what I'm going to do is um, a vision that the Holy Spirit gave me for this practical. So this is not from my imagination. And when you practice this at home, it's very important. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a vision. We don't want to work from our own self or from a different source. We want God to be the source of our prophetic um, training always. So um, this is for all of us tonight. It's only going to be in the main room. So I'm not going to send you out into breakout rooms. And I want you to write down what you see because I'm going to ask quite a few questions. And then he's going to speak to us about our prophetic ministry in this season, maybe in this season and in the coming seasons or maybe for the future. So you need to go home after this practical and you need to go ask God, Lord, for what? What is the timing? Is it for now or is it coming for us? So is everybody ready? Are you ready to try this? Okay. I see some excited faces. Awesome. Okay, so I want you to just relax and you're standing, see yourself standing in a place called a carpenter's workshop. So an artist that makes wood things. You're standing in a carpenter's workshop and you're hearing the wind blow softly outside and you can smell the wood in the place. And in front of you, you see a table. Beautiful, straight, rectangular table. And you're standing at this table. As you're looking at this table, you see on the right of the table, there is a tool, like some kind of works, workman's tool, something that is used to make wood. What is the tool that you see on the right of the table? Write that down. What is the tool that is on the right of the table? We will look at the interpretation afterwards. Just write down what you see. Okay. Secondly, we look at the table and we see that at the center in front of you, but at the back of the table, there is a little structure. Like something was built, maybe it is a little model, like a structure, like a, a location or a place. What is that place? What do you see? Is there a color to it? Is there a shape to it? Is it a place that God is reminding you of? 
What is the little miniature model that you see at the back of the table? Maybe you're not seeing anything on the table. That's also okay. Write that down. As you're standing in this workshop, you're looking around and now there's people, there are people standing with you in the workshop. Maybe it's one person, maybe it's two. Who is standing with you and around you in the workshop? Maybe they are wearing something or holding something. Maybe there's something about their name or something that they represent. Who do you see standing with you in the workshop? Write that down. If you're not seeing anybody in the workshop, that's also okay. Just write that down. Okay, I hope everybody saw something. Moving on to the next question. As you're looking in this workshop, at the back of the workshop, you see a bookshelf. On the bookshelf, there is multiple books. And on the spines of the books, you can see titles written. What are the words on the spines of those books that you see? Maybe it's just one book. What are the words or the titles on the spines of the books? Write that down. Okay. Coming back to the table in the middle. You see to the left, there's more tools lie, lying on the table, on the left of the table. You can only pick up one tool. Which tool is the Holy Spirit highlighting to you that's lying on the table? And this is where we're pressing in for detail. Pick up that tool. And look at it. What is the scripture that you see written on that tool? A Bible verse. What verse is written on that tool? Write it down. Very good. You look up from the table and you look to the left. And you see that the workshop's door is closing. The workshop's door is closing. What is the impression that you get as you see that door closing? Write that down.
And then lastly, back at the table, you look down at the table again. And right in front of you, there's a little sculpture, a little item or a sculpture. What do you see? Write down what you're seeing. Just to repeat for Gunjan, the second last question is, the door of the workshop is closing. What is your impression that you get when you see that door closing? Whatever comes to mind, just write that down. Impression, like the feeling, yeah. And the last question is, what is in front of you on the table? There's a little sculpture, little um, shape of something that the carpenter made. What do you see? Write that down. Okay, very good. I hope everybody was able to keep up. It's uh, quite a stretch, but it is detailed and it's it's really interesting. All right, so to explain to you what you saw, the tool that you saw on the right of the table, this is the tool that God wants you to use to activate your faith so that you can build in this season. So this is the tool that God wants you to activate your faith. It's something that you'll have to actively use so that you can build your perfectic ministry. The little model that you saw, or the little miniature structure, this is a location. And this is where you are called to build in the next season. Then who was standing with you in the workshop? Those are the people that God wants you to partner with to build in your prophetic ministry. And you need to go home and pray a bit about, do you is God going to bring them to you? Do you need to go approach them? Is it people that will still come into your life? But these are questions that might need some further prayer. So if you don't understand at this point, that's okay. But just take it to God and pray over it. The bookshelf that you saw in the workshop with the titles those are the words of wisdom that god is giving you for this season regarding your ministry so each title is a word of encouragement or a word of wisdom that god is giving you for this ministry the scripture on the tool that you saw on the on the left this is a scripture that you are to proclaim over your ministry in the season so if it was negative please don't proclaim it of your ministry but test it and if you feel it is from god this will release a lot for you so proclaim that scripture over your ministry and then the door that was closing ask god what are you supposed to close the door on in the season i think it relates to elaine's practical in the first one as well but maybe god showed you something else is there opportunities or distractions that are coming for you or at you that's not from God and you need to close the door? So whatever he showed you, pray over that. And then the last one, the sculpture that you saw in the table in front of you, this shows exactly what you are supposed to be building in this season. So whatever God showed you, this is what he wants you to build on. Okay. So I hope that made sense. Uh, you guys can watch the recording again if you want to uh, go back to this again. But then I also just felt to share a little short corporate word with everybody. As I was seeing this vision and I was praying for this this time, 
um, I just saw that in the workshop there was this red, beautiful tapestry coming down and just covering everything. And I felt that the Lord is just giving everyone a promise here that he's going to cover your ministry and what you are doing in his blood. There's a He's bringing you under his covering and he's going to release his protection over you in what you're doing. So take courage and go forth and do what God is calling you to do because his protection is in place. Hallelujah. So... I think, Elaine, there won't be time for a second practical. Um, we have seven minutes. So I think we can either do feedback or hand over to you. What do you think? No, I think it'll be wonderful to get some feedback. Thank you, Willie. <laughs> awesome. Can I ask one or two people, just uh, brave souls, who would like to share what God showed you? Anybody would like to share? Yes, Joy. <laughs> Good evening, Saint. Hi. Um, my tool was a sharp long like a knife that looks more like a sword and I'm going to activate that for my faith and a place that I saw it was a shiny door with some staircases and then I'll build it in the next se next season and then um, the next thing I saw it's a young man with a hand on his back looking down and then on my right and then the others I could not visualize them the people that were in the room but they were long and wearing white. So those are our partner with to build. And then the words that I saw on the bookshelf, it was T-Y-M-E-S times. And it was written in gold on a green book. The word of wisdom in the season for my ministry. And there I saw a spanner um, as a tool on the table. And then I got Proverbs 10 verse 15. And then when I read it, it said, the wealth of the rich is they are fortified, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. So I take the wealth is my fortress. Good. <laughs> and then on the closing door, I had the word saying meta resolved. And then I saw a sculpture. It was a staircase from the left and the right. And then it, it gave me a picture of, of the Olympic podium for the winners therefore it's a victory staircase for the people that will be coming from the left and the right and thank you for protection and covering by the lord amen wow that's extraordinary that is so amazing to see what god shows us eh? well done thank you joy for sharing that okay elaine we have five minutes left i'm going to hand over to you all right. Thank you so much, Willine. Wasn't that a fun practical to do? Something totally different to all the others that we've done. So well done to Willine and to Rehat, uh, who spent time with the Lord to um, compile these practicals for us tonight. And I know Willine was very excited about her practical. She uh, contacted me over the weekend about it. So I trust that you had a fresh revelation. I see she's going, yay. I trust that you had a fresh revelation of what it is that you need to do to build into your prophetic ministry uh, and how you can partner with the Lord uh, to increase your territory. Uh, I just want to speak life over your ministries that as you know, the Lord's going to be pulling out your tent pins and expanding your territory and, and plugging it in elsewhere. So be ready, be expectant. There's a lot of information that you received tonight. Uh, please, will you go and write it out? If you are unsure about certain interpretations, you can go to your leaders, your ministry leaders, or your pastor. Get somebody who, who's perhaps been longer in ministry to be a sounding board as you pray and meditate on it. Um, if it's not relevant for this season, if it's perhaps for a season to come, do write it out in your journal, a date, write down the date of today, keep an eye on it. The Lord is faithful to bring to completion what he has started in you. And so may you just be blessed in this season. And I'm really excited about what the Lord's going to do through everyone who's here. I know we didn't focus specifically on personal ministry, which we often do. Today was a little bit more intentional for, for your ministry. And I trust by faith that you will take that baton and run with it because you can do it. And uh, if you need to start that ministry, then I, I pray for courage and for boldness and strength for you to step out in faith in this season. Uh, because the Lord has called you for a time. 
such as this. So may you be blessed in the weeks and the months ahead. We do have another community meeting only, uh, the, I think it's the beginning, it's either end of November, beginning of December, but we'll send you the details as soon as that's been released as well. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. The last two hours just flew by, so we have three minutes to go, um, so I won't be long. I just want to honor everybody who's participated. Thank you for those of you who stayed and, and stepped out in faith in the breakout rooms, and I want to honor you for your faithfulness. You know, the Lord is faithful. Faithful. And uh, thank you so much for attending and being part of this community. And it was truly an international community, although I must say I love our wonderful South African brothers and sisters in Christ who, who joined us tonight. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not currently in the country, but we are praying for you in South Africa with the multiple challenges with load shedding. Um, and of course, all the flooding and the fires and everything that's been happening recently. Uh, please do know that we are lifting you up in prayer. I do have a testimony to share, though. My daughter, Catherine, who is studying at a neighboring uh, city, was at the train station waiting for her train to arrive so that she could leave. And there was this divine encounter with an elderly, more mature lady who we think is about 80 or so, who approached her and asked her if she could sit next to her on the bench. The elderly lady, uh, you know, they started chatting to each other. My daughter was reading a, a Derek Prince book and, and she saw on the lady's shirt that said something about Christ or Christian. And so they started speaking about God and, and ministry and so forth. And so this lady, when she found out that Catherine was from South Africa, she said, you know, we have been praying. And this is a British lady. Uh, she said, we, we, we have been praying for, uh, for South Africa. Oh, Catherine just said something. I'm sorry, Catherine, say that again. Oh, my, my apologies. She's from Northern Ireland, so my apologies. And um, her and her church or, or her, her intercession group have been praying for South Africa for some time. And so I want to encourage those of you from South Africa that do know that the world out there is praying for our nation. And I find that particularly um, humbling to hear that people who actually have no ties to our beautiful uh, Rainbow Nation are actually praying for us and for our nation and for our government and all the things that go on in our in our uh, nation. And so Catherine had a wonderful, Catherine initially said maybe she was an angel afterwards because <laughs> they just had such a wonderful uh, connect time. And uh, this lady needed help to find her train. And so Catherine helped her with her app and she directed her where to go. And this lady was going to a conference uh, in a neighboring village. And so when the lady left, she said to Catherine, and she said, Catherine, I will never forget you. And I thought that was so sweet. There's an elderly lady. And Catherine said, she prayed. She said, Lord, please now bump into this lady again. I don't know, you know, what are the odds? You never know. The Lord can, can bring many people together. And uh, so we are just grateful for anybody who's currently not in South Africa or perhaps not South African who are praying for our nation. I want to honor you for that. Thank you so much for taking our nation to heart and for praying for our beautiful nation. So we've reached uh, the end of our evening. It was an absolute pleasure to spend time with you. And it was an honor for Catherine and I to be serving you tonight. May you be blessed. Uh, may the Lord shine his face upon you in this season. And may there be breakthrough upon breakthrough in your ministry. And uh, as I reflect back on Willene's um, see of activation, I have a sense that the Lord is sending many people to many places. So it's not necessarily across the border, perhaps it's in your sphere of influence, but may you have the courage to step out in faith in this season and do the thing that God has called you to do because he has equipped you for it. So thank you for joining us tonight. May you be blessed. We hope to see you again soon. You're welcome to unmute yourself and greet everybody as we say goodbye. And uh, remember, carry on prophesying. Take care, everybody. God bless. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.